Emily Galgaski with Women 2.0's In Conversation series, here with Megan Smith at Google um, to talk about Google.org, where she's general manager and works as a VP of business development. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Sure. So tell us a bit about Google.org, the work you're doing around tech-driven philanthropy and what that means. Mm -hmm. So um, what we realize is that you know we have 10,000 engineers in, in the Google team, and we wanted to make a way for them to do philanthropic work in addition to the core work they're doing on search and other things. With this we wanted to make a budget so that um, engineers could come and propose projects that they felt could have really high impact potentially in the area of global health or energy or environment, green energy environment, um, poverty, etc. And but would just leverage this budget we could move their work to this cost center and kind of give this work um, to the world. And as someone who is trained as an engineer, what makes you the most excited about projects like these? I think, um, you know, I'm, I'm a tech, I'm an optimist, uh, and I love to work on technologies that um, do two things: work on increasing people's like the quality of life for people or things that help people, and the second is reducing our impact on the planet. And I think these are examples of where you're leveraging some extraordinary technologies at a global scale. And I imagine that the number of, of proposals that you, come, you see coming in from the engineering team are really exciting. Mm -hmm. And sort of along a theme that we talk about a lot as part of this series, which is innovation, is that idea of kind of taking a risk mm -hmm. and deciding that something that seems like a crazy idea to you might actually have weight. And what is your advice to engineers who are kind of kicking around an idea, but don't know if it really has merit. Well, I, th I think it's value. Just start talking to people. You know, talk to people. Maybe make a little prototype. You know, picture worth a thousand words. Demos are worth a lot. Um, and the good news is that in the world of computer science, the platforms have really advanced to a level Absolutely. where you really can prototype stuff. Um, sometimes even if uh, our UI team, just in general, if people are talking about stuff, they'll try to make a way to see what we're talking about. That way then we can all look together at an idea and say, oh no, that's not right or this is or whatever. So getting started is important. It's really about iteration of an idea that the first idea is not usually exactly right. Maybe it's directionally right, but the first instantiation is things always evolve. Sure. Um, I mean, it's true in products in general. You can look at any company and say, okay, what was their first product and where are they now? And I think the successful entrepreneurs and companies are adapt as they get input and figure out what it is we actually want to do or how this might actually work. Thinking about groups, maybe networking or maybe more project-based, um, and their makeup of men compared to women, um, I'm curious if there are any kind of exemplary organizations that you're aware of that mm -hmm. are really having a strong presence of female engineers. Right. I, I think it's one of the things that I was uh, blown away by, we met with the, I think it's the Engineers Without Borders people, and they had, they have all these chapters at universities and professional engineers. I think there's 13,000 engineers in this. You know, it's like Doctors Without Borders. Sure. It's the engineers. It tends to be a little more mechanical, civil, those kinds of engineering uh, folks. But 40% women um, in these groups. So what I thought about from that is that it, I wonder if service-based engineering um, where you're really doing a lot of outreach to, to, to really directly impact people's lives might be really interesting to women. I, I think there's definitely a thread there. I'm starting to see actually even more Ruby on Rails workshops that are aimed at women, mm -hmm. where the projects tend to be based on kind of social output mm -hmm. in a way that I hadn't seen at any other event like that. Right, and so if you think about you know, sort of having a goal of working on things you're passionate about, I think that for young women, you know, if we were to reach out to K-12 and tell them about these things that you can do, I think we actually would pull more women to computer science and technology, knowing that these kinds of careers are available to have direct impact through technology, in addition to direct impact through, say, an NGO work or, or other kinds of um, education or you know, other applied work, which is also very valid. But how do you get more women in technology? I think this would be one of the ways. What advice would you give to, let's say, a girl in high school who was potentially interested in computer science but maybe needed to be told more about it? I think, um, I think again, the key for boys and girls to pull them into computer science and technology is to show the applications. Like, sure. why do we do this thing? And so to help them go find some 
practicing you know programmers or and ask what are you doing and why are you doing it? what does your day look like um, what's exciting about this and and talk to a bunch of different people so you don't get a skewed view of one view and also the other thing that I think is really significant is you typically think of a liberal arts degree as a great base for then going on and doing whatever you might do I actually think a computer science degree and an engineering degree are just as valid a base in the 21st century manager. Right. It's, it's a great way to think about that stuff without maybe choosing right away, I'm going to be an engineer, I'm going to be a computer science, I'm going to use this as a base. Sure. Well, we look forward to seeing more from your team. Thank you so much. Thanks. This is wonderful.